And so where's the trick? I think I can do it. Hey guys, um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, as we are going through the seven cries of the cross um, this week leading up to Easter. And um, as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, um, Easter is when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And um, we cannot celebrate the resurrection if uh, there first was not a crucifixion. Uh, and so as this week, we go through the seven cries of the cross, the cries that Jesus uttered um, as he was being crucified. And so we heard um, the first night um, that cry um, from, um, sorry, I'm kind of in a weird headspace right now. Um, we heard the, the cry last night, um, the cry of accusation. Um, and then we heard um, the first night, the other cry. So sorry, I promise I watched the video. Um, Let's just go ahead and enter into prayer as we head into John 19 to hear the third cry from Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, come before you now just asking for grace. Lord, just asking that your spirit would speak in power, Lord. I pray that tonight I would not speak in eloquent words of wisdom, but that I would speak in demonstration of spirit and of power. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So John 19, I'm going to start us off in verse 23 um, and ending in verse 27. And it says this, when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Now, um, as you guys can already see, just from coming in tonight and how I've already just messed everything up, um, I clearly do not have anything to say to you, but I'm believing that God has a word for you. And as we enter this story here, we see the soldiers have just finished crucifying Jesus. They've stripped him of his clothes, and they're now casting lots for his tunic. And as all of this is happening, and Jesus himself is in the most extreme physical and spiritual pain that we could ever imagine, he looks down from the cross, sees his mother there, and John, the disciple, and he tells his mother that John is now his son, and John, that Mary, is now his mother. What Jesus is doing here is he's giving the care of his mother over to John and ensuring that she has someone to care for her now that he is about to die. And I want us to catch here that this is happening as Jesus is experiencing the greatest amount of pain ever before that ever will be experienced. And he's still looking to the interests of others. He's not looking out for himself. He's not asking for pity, but he's continuing to love and care for his mother. And this is in complete contrast to how you and I would respond in the midst of such pain. 
For us, when pain comes our way, we're so quick to pity ourselves, to seek pity from others, to feel deserving that, that we have some right to the pity of others because of how horrible our situation is. And, and even when we find ourselves in the midst of these situations, we cry out to God and we ask God to deliver us from this pain and this suffering. And our prayers are focused on us, me, 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 and the pain that I'm going through. And I can't even, I can't even fathom to think of someone else because I'm just in such agonizing pain. And God has to get me out of this. And then, then, I'll, then I'll consider the pain of others. Then I'll consider what others are going through. And yet Jesus was the total opposite of this. When he was at the moment of greatest pain, he was looking out for his mother. He was looking outside of himself and to others. And as we're in the, the middle of coronavirus and everything that's going on, I'm, I'm, I immediately am convicted in my own heart of when, you know, my senior year is coming to an end and I, I don't get to walk and I don't get to experience all the great things of graduation and how quick I am to feel disappointment for myself, how quick I am to think about me and how hard it is for me when people are going through unfathomable pain and people are losing their lives because of this virus. And yet I look to myself and I, I go, God, why did this got to happen to me? Why does this have to happen now where these things are taken from me? And if we look in, in each of our hearts, we kind of see that same, that, that same selfishness to look into our pain, our suffering, ask God to take us out of it. But it is not so, church, for our Savior, Jesus. When he was facing more pain and suffering than we will ever come close to, he was devoted to the well-being of others. And there's a profound truth here beyond the care that Jesus had for his mother in this moment. And let us also keep in mind that in this moment, as Jesus was looking for his mother to be cared for, it's easy, it would be easy for us to think, oh, well, it's because his mother, of course, you know, he, you have such a natural just love for your mother. At the same time, his mother was still a, a woman of sin, just like every single one of us, men and women of sin. And just as much as our sin and the soldiers that crucified him put him on that cross physically, it was also her sin that put him there on the cross. It's my sin and your sin that put him there on the cross and just as he looked to his mother and made sure that she was cared for he was going in compassion for you and i to make sure that we were cared for jesus was there with the father before the beginning of time as they wrote the book of life that he had he had already written down who would know him before the, the beginning of time he knew whom he was to save, who would be the father's children. And as he hung there dying, he not only had the care of his mother on his heart, he had my name on his heart. He had the names of all of his future children on his heart. And his heart and his mind were fixated with compassion on those children. Hebrews 12.2 tells us that Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 2.10 also says, For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. Saying that he was bringing many sons to glory, sons and daughters to glory as he hung there suffering, that he had that in mind as he went to the cross. In the Old Testament, the high priest in the nation of Israel, he was given a breastplate that he would wear over his heart. It had 12 stones on it, 
with each of the names of the sons of Israel engraved on each stone. In Exodus 28, verses 29 and 30, tell us, So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breastpiece of judgment on his heart when he goes into the holy place to bring them to regular remembrance before the Lord. And in the breastpiece of judgment, you shall put the Urim and the Thummim, and they it shall be on Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. Thus Aaron shall bear the judgment of the people of Israel on his heart before the Lord regularly. Friends, I want you to know that just as Aaron carried the breastpiece of judgment into the holy place before God, so Jesus carried the judgment of our sin upon himself into the throne room of God. He had our names written on that breastpiece of judgment. And he took the judgment that you and I deserved upon himself. Jesus said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And as he carried our judgment into the throne room of God, he said to his father, Father, behold, your sons and daughters. He had his children on his heart as he endured that cross. And as he did, he declared to his father, of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, you have not lost a single one. 